Hello everyone, my name is Jiun Li. We'll be discussing subchondral insufficiency fracture. Subchondral insufficiency fractures occur due to a combination of factors. These include diminished bone strength, decreased protective function of cartilage or menisci, and increased physical activity. Subchondral insufficiency fractures are most commonly found along the central weight-bearing aspect of the femoral condyle. They can also involve the central tibial plateau and, less commonly, the periphery of the articular surface. On MRI, we typically see a hypointense subchondral fracture line with a marked bone marrow edema-like signal intensity in the epiphysis and metaphysis of the affected bone. These fractures may be discontinuous and generally parallel the articular surface, often following a serpentine course. MRI findings based on epiphyseal collapse. We can categorize these findings based on the presence or absence of epiphyseal collapse. First, we'll discuss the cases where there is no epiphyseal collapse. Discontinuous or open-ended hypointense fracture line. Here, you'll see a hypointense line that is discontinuous or open-ended, running a short distance from the subchondral bone plate. Low signal intensity area subjacent to a subchondral bone plate, this is observed along with a thickened subchondral bone plate. Next, let's look at cases where epiphyseal collapse is present. Deformity of the subchondral bone plate. In these cases, there is a noticeable deformity resulting in a focal depression in the subchondral bone plate. This is a more advanced sign of subchondral insufficiency fracture where the structural integrity of the bone is compromised. Fluid-filled cleft underlying the subchondral bone plate. This finding shows a fluid-filled cleft, indicating gross collapse and separation. Spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee, SONK. Additionally, I would like to mention one more point. Subchondral insufficiency fractures with epiphyseal collapse were previously referred to as spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee, SONK. Today, we consider SONK a misnomer. It more accurately represents a subchondral insufficiency fracture of the knee that has progressed to subchondral collapse and secondary osteonecrosis. Some experts suggest retaining the term SONK for lesions that will not heal, but irreversible subchondral insufficiency fracture, or pseudoarthrosis, are more appropriate and descriptive terms. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like it.